So you want to learn how to sublimate a tumbler with a tumbler press. More specifically, how to sublimate a full wrap tumbler in an HTV Ron Auto Tumbler heat press. Well, you've come to the right place because that's what you're going to learn today. I'm going to walk you through all the steps that you need to know in this tutorial, sharing important tips and tricks along the way to ensure your project turns out perfect the very first time. I know it's tempting to skip around in YouTube videos, but I really wouldn't do that in this one if I were you. I cover so much important stuff in this video that I guarantee you wouldn't know if you've never done this before. Another exciting reason to watch until the end is so that you can learn how to enter our giveaway that's going on. To celebrate HTV Romp's third fans carnival, they're hosting a giveaway on my channel. We're giving away an HTV Romp auto tumbler heat press and sublimation mug bundle to one lucky winner. Thank you to HTV Romp for sponsoring this giveaway. Stay tuned because we'll talk more about that later. Have you ever went to make a project that you thought was going to be super simple and easy, but then you try and discover you actually had no idea how complex it was? This is one of those projects. When I first started making these, I thought it was going to be really easy, like sublimating a mug. You just print, cut, and heat, right? Wrong. You have to be super specific with your paper size, printer settings, how you cut and place your tape, how many times you rotate and heat for, so much stuff. But don't worry, I've got you covered with all of that. I also have tips on how to make your photo colors vibrant and your quality crisp and clear. In this easy beginner sublimation tumbler tutorial, you'll learn how to add photos to designs, you'll learn how to crop and rotate them, and how to print to scale so your design fits perfectly on your tumbler. If you're new to my channel, welcome! My name is Carrie. I'm your go-to channel for fun Cricut crafts, laser engraving, and sublimation projects just like this. If you want to see more content like this, then you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Any engagement with my channel helps my small business grow here on YouTube, so thanks to everyone who watches, likes, and comments. Before you tackle any kind of DIY project, you got to make sure you have the right tools for the job. So let's go over the materials that I'm using today. Most of my materials are from HTV Rot. They have fantastic products for Cricut and sublimation crafts. For tumblers, I'm using these 20 ounce skinny tumblers for sublimation from HTV Rot. My sublimation paper is from HTV Rot and also my auto tumbler heat press. I really, really love this heat press. It's called an auto tumbler heat press, but it's great for making mugs too. I always want to call it an auto mug press because I'm always making mugs in it, but technically it's called an auto tumbler heat press. I love this machine because it's super easy to use, making it perfect for beginners. It heats up really fast and you can even fit two coffee mugs in at a time, cutting your work time in half if you sell a lot of mugs. The buttons are digital and make sense. If you've worked with some cheap Chinese machines, you'll know what I'm talking about. Some machines have weird symbols for temp and time, and you have to push buttons like two times for temp, or one time for time, and it's just annoying. This machine has a thermometer for temp adjustments and a clock for time adjustments. Easy. If you're interested in buying a tumbler press bundle or sublimation tumblers like these, I have a special link in my video description that will save you 20% off. And if you want to see some more sublimation ideas and projects that I've made with this machine, check out some of my most recent videos on my channel. I've made two similar types of Mother's Day mugs. One says Mom's Garden, and the other one says First Mom, Now Grandma. They're super cute and really good sublimation projects to sell if you have a craft business. For a printer, I'm using an Epson Workforce 7210 that I converted to a sublimation printer a few years back using Hippo Ink from Amazon. I know most people convert the Epson Eco Tanks nowadays, but if it ain't broke, why fix it? You'll need some thermal tape to tape your design onto the cup and some protective gloves. The tape and gloves came with my auto tumbler heat press because they think of everything. So let's get started. First, we're going to prep our cup so it can be clean and dry for when we're ready to make it. Take off the lid and the bottom. Next, we're going to clean it with rubbing alcohol and a lint-free wipe. You want to make sure that your cup doesn't have any fingerprints, lotion, dust, or anything that doesn't belong on it. I use coffee filters because they're a cheap, lint-free wipe that's easy to find. Paper towels and toilet paper all have lint in them that could transfer onto the cup, so it's not recommended to use those. If you're in a pinch, you can, but if you want to make sure you're doing it perfectly, use coffee filters. Now, while that alcohol dries, we're going to move over to the computer. Click the link in my video description to find this design that I'm using. I found this rose gold glitter photo tumbler wrap graphic on Creative Fabrica's website. I thought that this design would be perfect for Mother's Day. Hopefully my mom doesn't watch this video or mind me sharing these pictures because this is her gift. Everyone I know is getting sublimated mugs and tumblers for gifts from now on. 
Creative Fabrica is my go-to place for all of my fonts and designs. If you have their all-access subscription like I do, you can download as much as you want whenever you want. The subscription is around $5 a month, but I think it's totally worth it for unlimited downloads with commercial license included. If you plan on selling your crafts, you'll need a commercial license for your fonts and designs. If you've never used Creative Fabrica before and are interested in trying them out for free, I have a link for a free trial down below in my video description. I'll be uploading this into Canva. I tried doing it in Cricut Design Space first, but their software is wicked annoying. And even though the design is under eight and a half by 11 inches with the registration marks in the corners, you can't print as big as this design. And there's no way to get rid of the registration marks. So we're going to have to do it in Canva. It's actually a lot easier in Canva because you don't have to slice your photos. Canva is free too. They have a paid version and a free version, but you can do this whole project in the free version. So open up Canva and we're gonna create a custom size. First change this to inches. The width is going to be 9.323 and the height is going to be eight. Then click create a new design. I've watched several tutorials on how to make tumblers like these and there seems to be a slight variation depending on who you watch. Some people said they made their designs to be 9.3 inches wide by 8 inches high, others 9.3 by 8.2 inches. I tried all of these and determined that the sweet spot is exactly 9.323 by 8 inches high. I would recommend doing a test print on regular copy paper before you load your sublimation paper into the printer to make sure your sizing is right. This way you don't end up wasting your expensive sublimation paper. We're gonna go to uploads, upload files, select the template and click open. Click your file and now we're going to enlarge it. The perfect square doesn't reach all the way over. You can see there's a little white sliver on the right. So just drag it a tiny bit until it touches. The next thing that we're gonna do is insert a frame so that we can insert our photos into the frame. So if we go over to elements, type in square photo frame, and you wanna select the second one right here. So drag this over and shrink it down to right about there. And then we're gonna copy and paste this so we have six of them. So I use control C and control V to paste, and then drag it down here, and then just Control V to paste again, and we're gonna rotate this so it fits right here. And just rotate all of these frames so they fit in the box. Now we're gonna do one more, but we're gonna make it larger. It's gotta be as big as this big box in the back. The next thing that we're gonna do is upload all of the images into Canva. So go back over to uploads and then upload files and then select whatever pictures on your computer that you wanna use and then click open. If you wanna select multiple at a time, you can hold the control button and then just select the ones you want. Or if you wanna select ones from let's say here all the way down to here, you can hold the shift button and then click the last picture and it will select all the ones in between or you can just do one at a time and open. But I think it's easier if you hold the control button and then select the ones you want. Then all of your pictures will show up over here. So you can click the one you want and then drag it into the frame. If you want to adjust your picture inside the frame, double click it and then you can either enlarge or shrink it down and then repeat that for the other picture. So drag it into whatever frame you want and then just release the button. Double click if you want to adjust. And then click off. We need to adjust the layers. So click on this big template right here, you know, the main one and then right click layer and bring this one all the way to the front. This way I can see this picture better. Right now I'm trying to select this middle picture, but it's selecting the whole frame. If you want to select just that picture and not everything, go over to where it says position and then select layers. And this is where you can see all of your different layers. So I'm trying to select this one. So if I click here, you can see it selects just this photo and then I can adjust it. All right, so now I have all my pictures where I want them to be, but I need to adjust the layers. So click that position button again. Make sure this template is all the way at the top 
And then you want to make sure that your middle picture is all the way at the bottom. So drag this all the way down to right there. Now it should look perfect. You can zoom in on the bottom if you want to double check everything. On this one right here, there's a tiny sliver of white on the bottom. Let's see if I can adjust that. Yep, that's better. All right, I think everything looks good now. The next thing that I need to do is mirror my image. You need to make sure that you select everything on the page so you can highlight everything this way or you can click Control A and that selects everything. I like using Control A because I know that it clicks everything that I need. And then you wanna click flip and then flip it horizontally. Now we're gonna go up to share and click download. We're gonna change the file type. So click this drop down menu and you wanna click on PDF print best for printing. Flatten the PDF because it says flattening your PDF can help ensure it prints properly. The color profile, there's RGB, which is best for digital use. This one says it's best for professional printing, but it's got the crown next to it, which means this is part of the paid version. I have the paid version, so I could use this, but for the video, I'm just gonna select this one, since I assume a lot of you don't have the paid version, and then click download. I just noticed that at the top of this picture, it looks like there's a little sliver um, where the photo is missing. So I'm just gonna zoom in here and yeah, I need to fix that. Definitely zoom in on your project and make sure that it looks perfect before you download and print. So click position, click that picture, and then just expand it so it covers. All right, let's try that again. Share, download, PDF print, flatten, download, open up the file, click print, Go to more settings. This is where everything might start to look a little different for you depending on which printer you're using and which computer you're using. Most of the settings will be similar, so just try to click the ones on your computer that most match the ones that I'm doing. So for scale, it's gonna be custom. Make sure this is selected to 100. Um, previously, my computer auto defaulted to 99% and then my files were printing all off. That 1% actually did make a big difference, so it's got to be 100% to scale custom. Then click Print Use System Dialog. Select the printer you want to use, and then we're going to go down to More Settings. You need to make sure that you click Borderless and then OK. So one thing that was a little tricky for me is I always have to select my paper source, and I usually keep my sublimation paper in Cassette 2 and my copy paper in Cassette 1. But when I clicked Paper Cassette 2, it made the borderless option go away. So I had to keep it in Auto Select and then put sublimation paper in both of the trays. So just make sure that you have borderless checked off. And then Settings, you need to retain the size. We don't want our scale to change. Then click OK. For the paper type, I'm going to be using Premium Presentation Paper Matte. And then make sure you change the quality to high or best. Everything else looks good, so click OK. Make sure you have your sublimation paper loaded, and then click Print. In my printer, the sublimation paper gets loaded with the HTV Rant logo facing up. Some printers, it's the opposite, so just pay attention to whatever that is in your printer. With the way this prints out, I only need to cut off the white strip on the right side of the paper. Next, I'm going to turn my cup upside down and wrap my image around it. Make sure you pay attention to your orientation of your design so you don't accidentally heat press it upside down. Make sure you pull your image as tight as possible and place a tape in the middle of the design. Then we're turn going your to machine add on. strips of tape all along. We're going to set the temperature to 385 degrees and then the time to 65 seconds. Then just let it heat up. Thank you. 
You can see that it closes pretty tight, but there's still a tiny little gap at the top, so that's why I rotate my design halfway through. Now we're going to reach in and give it a little twist. And then push start. Some people like to take their tape off right away. I like to let my thing cool down for like a good five minutes before I mess with it. All right, I let this cool for a good long time, so it's cool to the touch. I know some people are impatient and they like to peel it off right away, but I'm not one of those people. I just went and started editing the video while this cooled down. All right, moment of truth. That came out so cute. There is a tiny sliver of the seam where it didn't overlap all the way. I guess I probably need to do like 3.34 so it closes all the way. It was so close just to sliver off. Damn it. Whatever. My mom won't care. What do you guys think of this project? Do you like it? Let me know in the comments below. Now let's get back to those giveaway details. The Third Fans Carnival runs from April 8th to April 21st. It's the biggest sales event in the spring. Mark your calendars because on the final day, April 21st, we'll be drawing one random winner for the giveaway. Entering this giveaway is super easy. All you have to do is like the video and subscribe to the channel, which you've probably already done by now. Follow at h 2 era on YouTube and leave a comment down below. For an additional entry to the giveaway, you can join my Cricketer group on Facebook and leave a comment saying entered. I'll leave links and instructions in the video description as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think this tumbler came out amazing and it's going to be a really great seller. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.